Hi there, and welcome to the geodynamics video lectures on the topic of viscous deformation and the strength of the lithosphere. In this first lecture, we're going to talk about linear viscous deformation, and as you might realize, this is going to be something of a review, because we've already talked about this earlier on in the course when we talked about fluid mechanics. Anyway, we'll go over the basic ideas once again, just to make sure everything is solid. Now, when we talk about viscous deformation, and particularly linear viscous deformation, we're talking about having a relationship between the stress, in this case, the shear stress, tau, and the strain rate, which is epsilon dot s in this case, because it is a shear strain rate. And the proportionality constant in here is called the dynamic viscosity, which is basically a measure of the resistance of flow of a fluid. And so higher viscosity then means that fluids are going to be less uh, willing to flow or resist flow more strongly. Now, if we look at this in terms of a plot of stress versus strain rate, here we've got normal stresses, but this could be shear stresses just as well. Um, and you can see in this case for linear viscous flow, we have a linear relationship between stress and the strain rate. This should hopefully all be familiar. Now, more generally speaking, we could talk about the relationship between the deviatoric stress and the strain rate now where we have a factor of two multiplied in here and we won't talk about where that comes from but um, trust me it comes out if you follow the derivation of how you get to this general equation. Here we can see deviatoric stress is equal to two times the viscosity times the strain rate so we still have that linear relationship that is shown on the plot here. And the key thing for a linear viscous or a Newtonian fluid, uh, Newtonian is simply another name for a linear viscous fluid, is that this viscosity eta will be a constant. Now, if you're looking for some kind of real world relationship that you might be uh, familiar with, perhaps you're not that familiar with the idea of this dash pot here, but it's basically uh, a plunger sitting within a fluid and when you pull on the one end you can feel this fluid within resisting your attempt to pull on here. So if you're pulling where this uh, vector F, the force that's applied, you're being resisted by the fluid that's within this um, cylinder in this case as you're trying to pull out the plunger. It's kind of like a syringe or something like that and you could imagine taking a syringe and trying to suck water into the syringe is not that hard but if you tried to suck honey or some other fluid um, that's a little bit more viscous, of course, it's going to be more difficult to draw that into the syringe because of the viscosity of that fluid. Now, for viscous deformation here, we have, again, these kind of plots of strain versus time, or, I'm sorry, stress versus time, and then the mean strain versus time. Here we go from no stress to a constant stress, and then back to zero. So, from time zero to one, there's no stress. Constant level of stress between times one and two, and that results in a continually increasing amount of strain and then no stress afterwards. And you can see that strain doesn't decrease, which means our deformation is not recoverable, or in other words, uh, the deformation that results is permanent deformation uh, as, as compared to elastic deformation that will um, recover. Now to give you an idea of some of the numbers, I think we've already seen this slide as well previously. Uh, where we talked about, you know, the viscosities of air and water being on the order of 10 to the minus 5 or 10 to the minus 3 pascal seconds. Um, you know, again, these fluids move very easily. You can easily push your hands through water or air uh, without much resistance. If you try the same thing with ice or rock salt or granite, obviously, um, you're going to have a much more difficult time doing that because the viscosity of those materials, their approximate viscosity, is so much higher. Anyway, that's it for this lecture. It's just a review of linear viscous flow. And now it's time to go ahead and take your quiz in Moodle and come back for uh, the nonlinear viscous deformation.